you're going to be trying out uh, Blender, which is an open source 3D modeling program. And it can also be used for other things, even uh, such as animation. Scroll down here. Uh, we're going to focus on building 3D objects. And we also want to be able to control how they're rendered. We want to be able to have uh, an image with lighting uh, that's produced from the 3D model. But just as an aside, some people are using Blender for uh, other things like animation or storyboarding, uh, 2D drawing. But again, in this course, we're going to focus on the construction, the 3D object, and then also uh, explore lighting it and then rendering images from that. And if you go to blender.org, you can uh, install it. Again, it, this is a really nice tool because it is used by professionals. It's a respected tool, but it's also uh, free uh, long term. So it's an open source project with great respect. So just click download Blender. It'll take you to the next screen um, to download. And it, this will uh, work on multiple platforms. I'm on Windows. You might be on uh, Macintosh or other platforms, and uh, you'll have a version of Blender uh, for your platform. And this demo is working with version 2.93. Just want to point out. Yeah, so go ahead and install that, and then you're going to open up a sample file to start uh, our first lab. So I'm going to jump in. I have uh, just simply launched Blender, and I went to File Open so far and um, opened up a file that we're going to use as a starting document. And uh, th the beginning is just getting used to the workspace because I want to acknowledge that there's there's a lot of things going on in the program. Uh, but to get you oriented, there's a toolbar on the left and you can uh, click to switch tools. And in some cases, there's tools uh, underneath others. Maybe I'll just rest in the uh, selection tool up here. Um, and we also have panels in the program. So I'm going to point to uh, the right upper corner. And this happens to be called the outliner panel. I want to point out that uh, I can click in the corner of the panel and actually change what, what we're seeing up here. Um, but I want to recommend that this is a good workspace to follow. So if you want to mirror how I have my system set up, you can double check that in the upper right section that you are displaying the outliner. It, it just kind of show you that it, it could look different um, if you happen to click on something different. It's just going to change what's displayed in this section. Um, right, let me click back there and I'm going to reset it to outliner. You can also think of it as scene collection. You'll, you'll see that here at the top. Um, and this reminds me a lot of the layers panel in Photoshop because it's showing you all the different objects that are currently in the blend document. And it's also going to be an area where we see things like lighting and a camera, which will uh, help us control images that get rendered from our project. Uh, but they, they're represented as objects under scene collection also. And by the way, there's an icon on the right uh, that's controlling whether you can view it or not. Uh, so for example, I can click there. It almost looks like the eye is closed and then it's hiding objects. And that's temporary. I can click again to show them. Um, there, by, and by the way, there's two icons that deal with hiding. The one that looks like a camera affects rendering. It affects your ability to save out these final objects as an image. So for example, maybe you want to render a copy of this file, but um, skip something like the ring from the render image. So you can click the camera, and then again, when you save views and render them, it would hide it there. If you use the eyeball icon, it's hiding it uh, visibly in the main viewport, the main workspace. You'll go ahead and make it visible and turn on render for that object. And then another important section is located in the uh, right hand lower section. And I'm going to recommend that in this section you display properties. And properties is, is fairly complex 
panel because it has these little icons on the left. And you can actually click and get into various settings all from this one panel. And I think once you've explored that, let's uh, maybe reset it to uh, object properties. That way, if we start to select some of the objects that are in the document, we can see things like size information, location information uh, under transform. And by the way, these can be toggled open, uh, but you can leave open transform, which is showing measurements. And by the way, I'm in that select or tweak tool, you can call it, and I can click on these different objects to select them. And then at this point, the properties panel is showing me some measurements and information uh, about that object. Uh, you can even see the name of it right here if it's selected. So the sphere, there's a cone. Also, when I'm selecting the objects, you can see them highlighted up in the outliner in the scene collection. Just a couple places to kind of keep track of what's selected. And by the way, I can click a blank area in my main viewport in Workspace to uh, deselect objects. Maybe I'll click to turn off or deselect my current object. So that's just a little bit about the Workspace. Um, maybe one other thing to note is that uh, there's there's some menus across the top and um, like view and select and then I have another tier of menus across the very top of the program. Um, we're uh, in the layout tab at this time period. I'm going to basically stay in that tab. But I just want to point out we'll learn about some of the other features in later labs and there might be some features that we don't need during this particular course. It, one example is we're not really going to get into animation. Uh, but I want to point out that if you did click the animation tab, it's bringing up a timeline at the bottom of the screen um, and basically giving you features you would need for animation. Um, and then I can click layout to go back to my main workspace. Uh, so that, I hope that gives you a little bit of a rough tour of some of the main uh, sections in Blender. Let's take a little bit of time to learn some ways to navigate and move around and basically view your objects in different ways. Um, and I think a good place to start is in this upper corner, uh, seeing a little icon with X, Y, and Z uh, little markers. And this, this whole little icon is called the gizmo. It's kind of a fun name. Uh, and um, X, Y, and Z, by the way, is referring to different coordinates in space. So you might be familiar with two-dimensional objects that have width and height having X and Y dimensions. But we are in a 3D modeling program, so we also have Z, which is basically the depth or height of an object. Uh, and this gizmo deals with how to view things. Um, so right this second, when I open the file, I just happen to be um, in kind of a top view. I'm looking straight down um, on the Z axis. Um, and one way to use this is that you can click X, Y, or Z, and it's giving you kind of a top view, side view, and a front view is, is one way to think about that. Um, each case, when I just click X, Y, or Z, to me, um, it's a fairly uh, flat viewpoint. Like again, like straight down, straight on. Uh, but if we go back up to the gizmo, one of my favorite ways to navigate is to drag in, in the space kind of in between uh, X, Y, or Z. Um, and it's really fluid. Um, if you start to drag kind of in between those little markers, you'll see that it is a three-dimensional world. Ooh, it's kind of fun. You can even like look at the bottom, turn it. Um, so I'm changing my viewpoint. And you know, this is much more three dimensional than just looking straight on. Um, you might notice the color coding too. The X axis is visible on the viewport grid in red that coordinates with, with red up here. And then the green axis I'm seeing is, is the uh, Y axis. It's really helpful if you have a mouse that features uh, left, right, buttons as well as a mouse wheel. 
uh, want, to, want to kind of show you some things you can do with the mouse wheel. For example, I can zoom in and out by just rolling the wheels. It's super fast, really nice way to navigate. Um, and sometimes I press the mouse wheel and drag to move around. And I want to explain that that's the same effect I got by dragging on the gizmo. So if you don't have a mouse wheel, you do have alternative ways to work. You can, you can come up and drag on the gizmo. Uh, but I encourage you to consider getting a mouse with both buttons in the, in the wheel because it's just super convenient. Instead of reaching up here, I like having my cursor sometimes you know, right on the objects I'm working on. Um, and then I can navigate at the same time I'm working. So again, I can click the mouse wheel and drag. And then that's letting me change my perspective and um, spin or rotate around the world. It's another way to look at that. I'm orbiting is another phrase for this, this type of movement. And then I'll go back to zooming in and out. I did that initially with my mouse wheel. But if you want to look at an alternative method, there is a zoom tool underneath the gizmo. And you just uh, click on that and drag. <clears throat> That's a little bit different from Photoshop, by the way. I'm used to there choosing a tool and then seeing it on the cursor. Um, but I just want to say it still works. You just drag on the button itself, and you'll find you can move up or down to zoom in and out. Um, or, again, do that with the mouse wheel as an alternative way to navigate. Let's look at a couple more navigation tools right underneath Zoom. Um, hand tool, if you drag on it, is letting you change the current view. You could say that you are sort of panning or changing the focus uh, of what's centered on the screen. For example, I could have the um, origin of the X and Y axis uh, centered or again using the hand tool uh, maybe I want to have the view come from a different point point of view different section and then the camera icon is kind of interesting because you do have a camera and a light that's in this file and we're going to learn about controlling those in one of our later labs but I still want to point out that that exists and when you start a new blend filed by default, they're going to give you uh, one light and one camera. And the purpose of the camera is, you know, kind of like in actual filmmaking, uh, is that you can create pictures from a certain perspective or viewpoint. Uh, you can render images that are lit with a certain light, um, and the camera is controlling uh, the view. Uh, so the purpose of this camera button is you can click it uh, repeatedly, and it's toggling the view. It's changing the perspective right now, so it's pretending I'm seeing from the camera. And I can kind of see what section of uh, this document would render right now. Um, and then I just click it again to go back to uh, my prior view. And then the last button is about viewing things in a natural perspective or orthographic perspective. So it looks like a grid icon. And, it, and I like their icon, it shows it can be flat or in perspective. Uh, so orthographic view is sometimes helpful when you're working with objects. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to kind of see things this way, even though it looks less natural. So it's easier for me to see if something like the rear of this rectangle shape uh, is the same width as the front surface. Uh, when I'm viewing things in the natural perspective, it sort of looks more correct. It looks more like a rendered view, um, but sometimes it's harder to measure or compare certain things in that view. So the orthographic view can actually be handy. Um, and again, you can go back and forth by just clicking the button between perspective, orthographic. And right now, I think I'll just go back to the uh, perspective view at this time. I'll just move around a little bit. You might practice your view, kind of practice getting a little comfortable um, with seeing things in different ways and using the gizmo and these navigation tools. It's a really good starting point to get familiar with Blender. Let's start using some of the most common tools. So let's start with the select tool. And 
You can click objects to choose them. You'll see them highlighted in orange when it's selected. You can hold the shift key if you want to select multiple objects. There's two different colors. The uh, lighter orange is just showing the more recent selected object among the selection. And then to deselect, you can just click a blank spot on the screen or let me select a few objects again. A different way to work if you want to stay on the keyboard is that you can use Alt A, Alt key, and the letter A for all. Or, by the way, you can see these right under the view menu too, um, or under the select menu rather. If you're on Mac, it's going to be option A. So you can see right there um, for me on Windows, Alt A is deselecting. You can also actually just hit the letter A for all, by the way, which is even including things like the camera and the light. Um, and you know, maybe another way to work is to go to select menu and you can pick up a few shortcuts here um, along with some other commands. The next tool we're gonna work with is the move tool. Maybe I wanna change the position of some of these objects. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, move and I can click different objects. You can select the one you wanna move with move tool. And then you'll see this interesting little diagram. They're showing um, arrows uh, that match up with the axis in the document. So for example, if you want to move it in a single direction, you can drag uh, the corresponding axis arrow. Just for example, I'd like to move these along the X axis, but I don't wanna move it in any other direction. So I'll just pull, um, that red arrow. I'm going to click on the cylinder and kind of same idea. I want to just move it along the, this red axis so I can drag specifically on the red arrow. I'm going to experiment a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, with the ring. I can drag the green one. <clears throat> now I'm moving it back and forth along the y axis. If you want something to float up higher off the page, off the floor, you could call it then work with the Z axis. And it'll even let me go um, like below a certain surface. And sometimes it's helpful to take a look at these movements in different uh, views. Remember, you can click in the gizmo on X, Y, or Z to see a flattened view. So for example, maybe in this view, it's easier to see that uh, I'm moving up or down by pulling the blue arrow to go up or down and travel along the Z axis. These objects, by the way, are just like a little bit below the uh, zero point. So maybe I'll move this one uh, down a little bit too. So it looks like it's uh, closer to the other objects. Then I think I'll go back to a more of a three dimensional view. Another way to use these little uh, objects you're seeing is that you can drag on the little kind of rectangular shape that's in between axes to move in more than one direction. So for example, um, I just grabbed the little blue one that was in between the X and Y axis. It means I can move in more than one direction. Right now it's, I'm allowed to move in X and Y by grabbing the one that's in between those two. Maybe what's counterintuitive is that one is moving everything except blue. Um, so it's not moving up and down, it's just moving um, forward or left and right along the x axis. Maybe I want to move like around this object without having it lift off the floor. It could be one, uh, uh, one way to perceive that movement. The freest one of all with move is to drag from the white circle. If I drag there, I can move in all three axes. Like, woo, it's up in the sky, I'm floating up high. I can also move to the front, left, right. So again, that, that's sort of the freest uh, way of movement. By the way, I'm gonna return to my past position. I'm just gonna undo 
with Control Z or Command Z on Mac. So try out move. You can move more than one object to uh, get familiar with what your possibilities are. Let's try rotating some objects with the rotate tool. For example, um, I'm going to click on the ring and I'd like to rotate that. So you'll see a circular icon and notice that you have color coding. Again, that red, green, and blue are coordinating with being able to rotate in different directions along your x-axis, z-axis, or y-axis. Uh, so I think initially what I'll do is try dragging um, on the red line, and then you can see it's spinning around the uh, x-axis, but it's limited to moving in one direction right now. And you can keep experimenting. Uh, the idea there is if you drag on the individual color line, it's limited. So let's say this time I'll drag the green line and you can see that it's spinning around the y-axis. You can also drag uh, kind of in between and then it's free, free movement. I can rotate in uh, all three axes at the same time. I'm going to uh, go ahead and try scaling. So the next tool in the toolbar is titled Scale. I'm going to click on uh, this thick rectangle and you'll see the really similar looking icon to uh, rotate, except it's got little cubes on the endings to kind of maybe remind you that you're scaling. And I want to scale just along one dimension. I'd like the Y axis direction to be shorter. So I'm just going to drag directly on the green line. So I think you'll probably catch the pattern at this point that you can drag a color-coded line to scale in one dimension. So let's say if I wanted this to be taller, maybe I'll click the cylinder and I'm going to drag on the blue circle or rather blue line to uh, make that taller. You could say I'm scaling uh, only along the z-axis. And then you have other options if you start to drag these little icons that are in between the axis lines, then it's giving you more freedom. You can essentially scale more than one direction at the same time. I'm going to experiment with the rectangular shape. So we go ahead and choose that again. And this time I'm going to try dragging um, on the little red box. And then depending on how I move, you can see that it's letting me uh, change the width and also the depth at the same time. And don't forget, you can undo, so you can experiment. If you don't like something, just hit Control-Z or Command-Z to back up in your steps. Up. And then at this point, it might be nice to see how to create more objects now that you can move, scale, rotate. Um, you know, just for example, maybe I'll go ahead and um, push some of these out of the way. And I'm interested in um, adding objects, kind of seeing how these came to be in the first place. So you can go up into these sub menus. And we're going to use the add menu. And all of these objects that we're seeing are referred to as meshes. It's just a simple way of saying it's, it's a three dimensional object, um, it's a shape. And you can see your choices. Um, you've been experimenting with a lot of these already actually. Um, so you'll see things like we have a cone. The uh, ring is called a torus, technically, a cylinder. Uh, we have a UV sphere. Um, plane and circle are flat objects, by the way, they're kind of two-dimensional. And uh, sometimes those are nice as starting objects. And I'll do things like alter their shape a little bit and then extrude them to make them thicker. Uh, or you may also sometimes just want something like a floor, kind of a, a flat surface to work with. Um, uh, but I think I'd like to insert um, a three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to start with trying a cube. And then once it's added, um, I can use the move tool to scoot it around. I think I'm going to actually pull this one forward. 
and you can add as many objects as you like. So I'm going to go back to add mesh. Uh, maybe I'll try adding a cone. And you can also practice rotation and scaling and moving. And then I'm going to add a special object. You might wonder why why there's a monkey in here. It seems like a strange choice. But uh, it's actually the mascot for Blender. And notice it says construct a Suzanne mesh. So Susan is actually the nickname of the monkey that is a mascot for the program. So go, go ahead and try and add the monkey. And then uh, I think what I'll do is rotate sort of like it's looking away from me. So I want to um, turn this and maybe get a better better view of it. Let me turn that one more time. And then I'm going to scale mine. And uh, I'm going to drag on the white circle so that I'm actually scaling uh, all dimensions. So there you go. That's um, Suzanne, the monkey, our mascot. And I hope this was uh, a good way to get started working with Blender. If you want to get rid of an object, by the way, you can select it and then use delete right on the keyboard to uh, remove the object.